Welcome back. Last time we looked at this Sossi CCTV camera and we gained root access to it. We managed to telnet into it through the ethernet interface that allowed us to look at how the Wi-Fi on it worked. And we found that it was connecting to a given Wi-Fi network with a fixed Wi-Fi password of 123456678. With that, we managed to create a access point using a USB Wi-Fi adapter that mirrored those details and the camera connected to it, proving that we were right in that assumption that that was the network it was connecting to. And then we could tell that into the camera through the Wi-Fi interface. Now, these connect through to the MVR, and I've got the MVR here, the network video recorder, the actual device that records the CCTV. So let's take a bit of a closer look at that board. So we'll just zoom in. It's fairly typical for one of these. We've got power coming in, USB ports, a wired Ethernet jack, and that goes to the home network. That's how it connects out to the cloud services or whatever. We've got HDMI and VGA for connecting to a monitor. We've got a SATA port here for connecting the drive where the video is stored. Look into the board itself. Under the heatsink is the SOC. It's another high silicon SOC. External DDR flash. And then down here we have 8-pin SP, sorry, external DDR RAM. Down here, we've got SPI flash. It's in eight pin package there. You notice this footprint, it's also got a 16 pin outline. So what you can do is you can use a 16 pin flash chip and rotate it, put it the other way around. So that gives you some supply chain flexibility. Coin cell and a small cylindrical crystal, 32.768 kilohertz. That will be a real time clock. But what we're really interested in here is the fact it's got this Wi-Fi module on it. So it's a little USB Wi-Fi module, and this is what the camera is connecting to. So the camera came paired to the DVR when it was bought. I was very much under the assumption there'd be some kind of pre-shared key or some means of pairing them that would generate a random, unpredictable key between the two devices. Now, to get hold of that, the easiest way I thought was routing the camera. However, had I known it was so simple, it might have been easier to grab what's called a WPA2 handshake, that authentication process using the password, grab that off the air, and then brute force it, guess lots of passwords and see if we get the right Wi-Fi password. So I thought it's always worth having all these different tools in your arsenal so you can work out how to carry out these attacks. So we're gonna try and grab that WPA handshake. So we're gonna use this same USB Wi-Fi adapter here. We've got the camera powered on, we've got the DVR powered on. Now we're gonna switch through to the virtual machine. Now I've already scanned for Wi-Fi networks and we can see that that SSID, that MVR, then that long random looking string is present. We can see it and it's on channel 13. So the MVR is creating an access point. What we want to do now is we're going to use the air crack suite of tools to allow us to grab that handshake. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start, we need to put that uh, USB Wi-Fi adapter into monitor mode. And we use Airmon NG to do that. Um, we need the name of the interface, so let's just grab that. Name of the interface here. We pop the name of the interface in there. And then we tell it which channel it's on. Why do we tell it which channel it's on? Well, it means that the device isn't hopping through all the 13 Wi-Fi channels. It means we're not going to miss a handshake because we're on the wrong channel. So we'll go on to 13 there. And what it will do is it will create a new interface called WLAN0MON. So this is now in monitor mode. That allows us to sniff traffic. Now, the next tool that we're going to use is called AeroDump. And this essentially sniffs the traffic, sees what's going on, and it will try to grab one of those handshakes. So first off, we tell it which adapter we want. We want to filter it down to be channel 13. Um, we want it to be on... ESSID and then the name of that long random string. Again, filtering it down means that the Wi-Fi adapter is more likely to grab what we want and not other things. The name of that, and then we need to tell it which file to put it in. So I'm going to put it in a file called um, Zossi, and then I am going to press enter. So this is the typical view you get here. So we can see a few things here. In, in this top section, we have the Wi-Fi access points it can see. So you can see we've got that MVR one there. Now you can see there's a lot of data going backwards and forwards. That camera is talking to the MVR. Down at the bottom here, we've got the client. So 
you can see there the MAC address of the access point there, 6930. You can see that there, it's that last line. And then the MAC address of the camera. And you can see the amount of data going backwards and forwards. It, it's quite verbose. Now we haven't got a handshake yet. So we could try deauthenticating the camera. Deauthenticating means injecting a packet onto the network that will kick the camera off and it will reassociate. But let's stick with the lazy solution. We've got physical access here. So let's unplug the camera. You'll notice the data stops flowing. We'll then plug the camera back in. Now what we want to do is we want to wait a few seconds. What we should see, probably within 30 seconds or so, is that camera will start to connect and it will start to send data. Now, oddly, we haven't got a handshake there. So more data is flowing, still not that much data, but things are going on. No handshake though. So sometimes it can be a little bit challenging. Oh, there we go, the handshake's been captured. So you can see there up at the top, it says WP handshake, WPA handshake, and it's given us the MAC address of our access point. So this is great. So what we're gonna do is just come out of here now we've got that file as a cap, a PCAP, um, a network traffic captured by that device. So now what we can do is we can run um, Aircrack. Aircrack is just the actual tool that's used for brute forcing that PCAP file. I'm gonna give it the name of a dictionary. Now, let, let me actually show you this dictionary. Because we already know it, I don't wanna spend hours brute forcing it. That's all that's in the dictionary. Password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and not the password. Just to demonstrate this is working. So we do Aircrack, Dash ng, need to do it sudo probably because those files don't have read permissions by the normal user. Dictionary, and then we need to give it zossi1.cap. Is that what it is? Yep, yeah, cap. Hit go. And there, because it only had to try three passes, or try two, um, you can see key found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Grabbing that handshake has allowed us to brute force that password. So all of that work we did rooting the camera wasn't strictly necessary to get this password. But there still is this unknown thing. How did the camera know to connect to this given MVR? How did it know to get that particular long, random looking string as the name of the network? And that's what I want to investigate in the next parts of this. How is it working that out? Because can we somehow tamper with that process, make the camera do something unexpected. Another thing I want to look at is what happens if we've got both the NVR working and our own host access point with the same details. Can I de-authenticate the cameras and cause them to connect to this instead of the NVR, causing a denial of service, stopping the cameras working so I can break into the property and not be seen. So I hope you enjoyed that, that one's a bit quicker. Very, very simple method of grabbing WPA handshakes and then cracking them. You can see how easy that is. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you wanna see more of this kind of stuff, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll be back with more in a few days time. Thank you.